Hello everyone, in this video I would like to recap what we learned in the last few life lessons. Well, first I would like to spend the first few minutes to talk about dimensions in a recap way and then uh, we will talk about similar figures in a recap way and then in the in this video I would like to talk about some harder question types and also the presentation. Okay, first talking about the dimensions. We mentioned before that for dimensions you should associate it with degree of an expression. Okay, so what is a degree? The degree means how many variables are multiplied together. Variables are something that can change, so usually we use x, y, z to represent some lengths. They can be 5 cm, 6 cm, they can change, then we say that they are variables. For num numbers like 3, 4, or pi, uh, they always equal to the same values and they won't change. Then we do not say they are variables, they are just some constants. Okay, so we need to identify three words. The first is length, it is a one-dimensional measurement. For area, it is a two-dimensional measurement. And for volume, it is a three-dimensional measurement. Okay, so let me give you some examples of length. Refer to this figure. For example, we have x or x squared plus y squared square root, y plus z, 4x plus 2y, they are all lengths. Okay, so you can see that actually a degree one thing plus degree one thing is still degree one thing because it's like adding up the length, it's still the length. For area, we will have a degree 2 expression like this, and then you can see that degree 2 plus degree 2 is still a degree 2, because it is like adding up the area. For volume, we may have like xyz or 10xyz, they are degree 3 expression, so it is a volume expression. Okay, so for this part, your only thing to do is to identify uh, which degree an expression is, and then uh, what is the dimension of that? And then you have to understand these three words, length, area, volume, and that's all. Okay, so I use some examples from exercise 7.4 to recap about this concept again. Uh, first, uh, when we talk about light number two, okay, so we need to write down the dimensions. So we need to look at the variables. This is part A, so uh, there are only D and H being variable. Part B, only D is variable. And then plus c, d square is degree 2 and then h is degree 1. So uh, the answer will look like this. Let's see whether you can understand that. Okay, let's look at number 4. Uh, we look at the variables part. We have degree 3 here and then degree 2 here. Make sure that you understand the numbers actually are some constant and it doesn't affect the degree. So the answers would look like 3 and 2. Okay, for number 5, let's look at part c, part d and part f. Okay, for part C, you can see that it is a pi a square, so it is degree 2. CD is degree 2, so it means that two areas add up together. The answer would be 2. Area plus area is still an area. And then for part D, you can see for this part it is an area because it's degree 2. And then for this part it's a length. Area times length, of course, it is a degree 3 thing. And then for part F, you can see area minus area, it is an area. Divided by 4, it's just like you have an area here, you cut it into 4 pieces, it's still an area. Okay, so the answer would be 2. Okay, so if you can understand up to here, uh, I think it's alright. And then for 7.4, it's complete. Let's look at 7.5. It is quite similar to the, I, to the discussion of 7.4. Okay, so for 7.5 similar figures, it is actually quite similar to what we learned before about similar triangles. However, now we have to consider the degree as well. It means that we have to consider whether we look at the length, area, or volume. Okay, so what's meant by similar figures in the beginning? We say that two figures are similar only if every corresponding parts have the same ratio. It means we are enlarging or reducing our figure. Okay, so the keyword is every. So it means that if you can find any one part that has different ratio, then they are not similar figures. For example, if you see that each part is multiplied by 2 from the left figure to the right figure, you can calculate the shaded area for each figure. You can see that the shaded area is 3 and 12 respectively, and then for the volume, it is 6 and 48 respectively. You can see that although the length ratio is 1 to 2, the shaded area will become 4 times, and the volume will become 8 times. Okay, so why is it four times? Because for each length, it is having an effect of multiplying by two. So we have multiplied by two squared. Why is it eight? 
because for all the three dimensions, we have multiplied by 2, so we have multiplied by 2 to the power 3. So in general, for area, we multiply by the square of the length ratio. And then for volume, we multiply by cube of the length ratio. Okay, so let's do a summary. It means suppose L1, L2 be the lengths, L, A1, A2 be the areas, V1, V2 be the volumes of the two figures. Then we would need to associate the corresponding parts. Okay, so let's say A2 over A1 should be the same as L2 over L1. V2 over V1 should be the same as L2 over L1. However, it's not yet done because we have to match the dimensions. Okay, so we have to add this part, which is to match the degree, then this is something that always true for similar figures. Okay, so this part would be the key points for 7.5. Okay, so now let's look at exercise 7.5, number 8, and number 11. For number 8, first we have to identify the corresponding parts, find the ratio y over 10, 54 over 16, and then we match the dimension by having the length ratio here, power 3. After some calculation, we will arrive at y to the power 3 equals to 3, 375. And I suppose some of you may be trapped here. How can you arrive at the final answer from y cubed equals to 3, 375 using calculator? Let me tell you now, if you missed the last lesson, we make use of this button, shift x to the power 3. And then you will see the small symbol here. Okay, then you will arrive at 15. So in the mathematics context, you can represent this value by cube root of 3375. Please note that the 3 must be written very small, because if you write like 3 square root 3375, the answer would be different. The meaning is also different. Now let's move on to number 11. You can, in order to find the area ratio easily, we may make a draft like this. A1 to be the surface area of the basketball and then 0 0.64 A1 to be the surface area of the football. And then for the radius, we know that the radius of the football is 12 cm and x cm to be the radius of the basketball. So here I would like to emphasize on the presentation because if you use A1 here or x here, they are not defined. So you have to let the symbols. Okay, so after letting, we can write the ratio out. It is 12 over x and then matching with 0.64a over a. However, the degree is not matched yet, so we have to square up the left hand side. To calculate, we square up each part of the left hand side and then for the right hand side, the a is cancelled away. So we have x squared here equals to 144 over 0 0.64. We need to take the square root using the calculator. The answer is 15. So finally, we write the answer statement. The radius of is 15 cm and that's all. Okay, so if you attended the live lessons before and you understand everything, you can start from here now. First, I would like to talk about example 22, and for this question, most importantly, you have to note the presentation. First, you can see that there are actually no values given from the questions. You only know that the area increases by 44%. So how can we kick off? Let's try to let some symbols to be the area and to be the length. So altogether, you will find four variables, a1 to a2, L1 to L2, and we only know that A2 is equal to 1 plus 44% A1. Okay, so you can see that the challenging part of this question is not the difficulty, but the boredom of letting the symbols. To be secure, remember to let all the symbols. Oh, so sad. Okay, so you can see that how much I want to die after writing these things. However, you still have to write that for security. Okay, then we can start calculating. First, we write the relationship between A2 and A1. A2 is equal to 1.44 A1, and then we match the two corresponding parts. It means L2 over L1 equals to 1.44 A1 over A1. However, you have to match the dimension, so we square up the left-hand side. So we can take the square root on both sides, and then you will get 1.2 on the right-hand side. It means L2 equals to 1.2 L1. Finally, we can find the required percentage increase, 
which is the new length minus original length over original length and you can simplify the L1 and then the answer would be 20%. So for this question it's not really hard but we have to note the presentation. Next I would like to talk about another challenging question type. I will use follow up 23. First let's look at the given condition. The ratio of the volume of the smaller pyramid to the frost term is 1 to 26. Well first I would like to ask you a question are they similar to smaller pyramid and the frost term? No, they are not similar figures. We can only say the smaller pyramid to the large pyramid, they are similar. Okay, so how can we make use of this information? 1 to 26. First, we have to observe that the similar figures are the small pyramid to the big pyramid, including the small pyramid part. Because the volume of the smaller pyramid to the volume of the first term is 1 to 26. So the volume here would be 1 to 27. And then for the height, suppose we let HCM for the height of the first term. Then when we look at the similar figure, we can express each height as 12 minus HCM and also 12 CM. Okay, so now we write out the ratio we have 12 minus h over 12. It is the length ratio equals to 1 over 26 plus 1. Or directly you can write 1 to 27, that's fine. Okay. And then we have to match the degree. So it's like that. Okay, so make sure for the next step, you do not try to expand the fraction on the left hand side. Instead, you have to take the cube root of 1 over 27. Of course, if you want to skip this step, that's fine. You can directly write 1 over 3. Okay, so the following step will be quite easy after you can deal with this part. All right, h equals to 8, and the required height is 8 cm. Okay, now let's look at part b. We try to look at the similar area of the two figures. Okay, so we look at the area of VAD and the area of VBC, but not the lateral face ABCD. Okay, so we can find the ratio easily because we already find out the length ratio to be 1 over 3 in part A, like here. Okay, so we can write like this in words. The ratio of area of triangle VAD to that of triangle VBC would be the length ratio 1 over 3 square which is 1 over 9. So when we look at the area of the lateral face, this is the part of VBC minus VAD. So the required ratio would be out of the 9 portions, I minus 1 portion for the small triangle, to 9. Okay, so the answer would be 8 to 9, and that's finished. Okay, so I do not give you extra homework. Of course, you can do exercise 7.5 for your own interest. But what you need to submit is only your week 4 assignment. Enjoy!